the object is you're gonna also show use this buggy to show what is object doing see over here you have a nice uh, space you're gonna show what is buggy doing from zero to second to three seconds you're gonna also show what is buggy doing from three to four seconds you're also gonna show what is buggy doing from yeah from four to five seconds you're also going to show what is buggy going to do from five to seven seconds. Finally, you're going to show what is buggy doing from seven to ten seconds. Go to three seconds, you would stay still. From three to four seconds, you would turn on until you reach x equals four and reach like that. And then the buggy would have to stay still at three for two more seconds. And then finally, the buggy would have to go all the way to negative one. So let's fill in this DT table for this red buggy. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with section A. And in section A, the displacement of the red car is constant. It's just two meters. So what is the change in displacement? Well, the final displacement is two meters. Let's, let's write the formula down. The final displacement minus the initial displacement. So the final displacement is 2 meters, and the initial displacement is also 2 meters. So the change in displacement is just 0, right? And the displacement does not change, OK? Now, what is velocity? Velocity is simply the change in displacement over time. So of course, if the displacement doesn't change over time, then the velocity is going to be 0 meters per second. And likewise, acceleration is the change in velocity over time. So if the velocity doesn't change, well then acceleration should not change either. Right? So everything is zero meters per second um, for the first part of the graph. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the second section, section B. Oh, okay. This one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So for the second section, section B. Uh, let's calculate the displacement. So again, I write the formula. The change in displacement is the final displacement minus the initial displacement. The final displacement is 4 meters. The initial displacement is 2 meters. And so the change in the displacement of the red car is 2 meters, right? What about the velocity? What's the velocity of the car? Well, velocity, uh, why did I, okay. Velocity is just the change in displacement over how long it took the car to make that displacement. So we already have delta D, that's 2 meters. And how long did the car take to make that displacement? Well, 4 minus 3, right? That's how many seconds the car took to go from 2 meters to 4 meters. So that's going to be 2 over 1, which is 2 meters per second. Now, 2 meters per second in which direction? Well, um, as we specified, Okay, this is north, east, south, west, right? So if the car's displacement is increasing, we assume it's moving to the west, I mean, to the east. So that means this is two meters per second to the east, or I can just put plus two. Okay, so plus two meters per second. And finally, what about the acceleration? Well, acceleration is the change in velocity over time. Now, is velocity changing here? No. The velocity is constant. It's, uh, it's staying 2 meter, meters per second for the entire journey. Uh, okay, so for part C, um, what is the change in displacement for the car? Okay, dF minus di. Okay, so the final displacement is 3. The initial displacement was 4. And believe it or not, the change in displacement is negative 1. Now, what does that mean? Can a car have negative one displacement? Yes, because displacement is not distance. Displacement indicates direction. So that means the car went backwards. It went to the west for part C. So the change in displacement is going to be negative one meters. Okay. Just to clarify what that means, the car started off with a zero change in displacement. Right? It just stays here. Then it moves to the east. That's part B, and then for part C, it moved to the west, okay? Okay, so what about the velocity for part C? Okay, velocity we know, 
Okay, that's not. Okay, velocity is simply the change in displacement over how long it took for that displacement to change. So let's uh, write this down. The change in displacement we already calculated, negative one. And what? How long did it take for that displacement to occur? Well, it took five minus four seconds, right? Tf minus Ti. So this is minus one over one, which is negative one meters per second. That negative one signifies that the car is moving to the west. Okay, that's what the minus means. If it was plus, then the car would have been moving east. But we know it's going backwards, so it's minus. Okay, and what about the acceleration? Well, once again, acceleration is the change in velocity over time, but is velocity changing? No. How do I know it's not changing? Well, first of all, I see a linear displacement. If the displacement is linear, then I know the acceleration is not changing. Or another way you can see that is the velocity is staying minus one for the entire journey, right? From, right, so we can uh, also, write it like this, and of course this is simply zero, right? Okay, so that is part C, part D. Um, so for part D, we see the displacement is three meters for the whole part, um, but the change in displacement is zero. Why? Let's do the math here. So the change in displacement is final, okay, that's three meters, minus initial, that's also three meters. So Three minus three is zero meters. Um, what about the velocity? The velocity is going to be change in displacement over time. Of course, displacement does not change, right? So neither, it doesn't matter how long it took, but okay. But if displacement does not change, then neither does velocity, okay? And of course, therefore, if velocity does not change, Acceleration should not change either. Okay, and the last part is part E. Okay, so what is happening in part E? Okay, so we have something happening in part E. First, let's calculate the change in displacement. Okay, what is the final displacement? The final displacement is what, minus two? Or... Okay. Okay, so here, right? Yeah, it's not to scale. Um, oh, I'll just make it end over here and make that minus one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. 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 Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's move this. Okay. Good. Okay, so let's calculate the change in displacement for E. So the final displacement is negative one, and the initial displacement was three, okay? So the change in displacement is negative four, is that right? Well, you can also check by counting the boxes, right? One, two, three, four, negative four meters. So what does it mean for the change in displacement to be negative? It means the car is going to the west, it's going backwards. You can also tell that by seeing that the graph is going down, right? The displacement graph is going down. If the car was moving to the east in the positive direction, the graph would be moving up. Okay, what about the velocity? That's the change in displacement over time. So that's gonna be negative four over. So let's see how long it took for that displacement to occur. So the final time is 10, Tf. The initial time is seven. Okay, Ti, so this is going to be minus four over three, uh, which is something like 1.33, I guess, meters per second, okay.
So that is our velocity. And our velocity is negative because the car is traveling to the west. And what about our acceleration? Okay, acceleration is the change in velocity over time. Uh, but the velocity is constant, right? How do we know that? Well, we have a linear change in the displacement. Uh, another way you can see the acceleration is zero. You can just plug in the number, okay? Minus 1.33 over 10 minus 7. Of course, minus 1.33 plus 1.33, that's a zero, right? So as expected, the change in, uh, I mean, the acceleration is just zero. So that's it. What's the equation of A for displacement? Well, clearly, since it's a static line that stays at 2, it's just going to be uh, d of x, uh, sorry, d of t is 2. Now, for velocity, it's static, so v is just 0, and so is a. Well, a is always 0. All right. No, Dad, that's going to take up too much space. It's the same thing. Or I can do it the nice way if you'd like. Just. No, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. That's so much clutter. You think that looks better? Yeah. Okay. So, for the next one, D is increasing linearly, and it looks like it starts at 2 and ends at 4 with a slope of 2. So that means that using slope-intercept form, it's 2x, but what is the y-intercept? Well, the thing is, it starts at 3, 2, which means if we plug in 3, we should get back 2. So that means the y-intercept is negative 4. So what about v of t? Well, it's just a slope, which is 2. Can you, sh can you show that one? Huh? For my experience, y-intercept is negative 4. So that one Alright, so we already know the slope is we already know the slope is two, but we don't know the y intercept, which I'll substitute for b. So let's try to find b. We know that this line contains the point three comma two right over here. So let's plug in three, three comma two. two. And no dad, we don't need that. Okay, sure. So can you explain also my student why you can not using 4 comma 4? No, you don't need it. All you need is one point since we already know the slope. Show that both points give you the same y intercept. Okay. So, using 3 comma 2, we plug in 3 and we plug in 2 for d of t. And the other point, which is 4 comma 4, show that both to the number. We just plug in d of t is 4, and x is 4, so it's 8. So b is also, once again, minus 4. That's how I want it. So because they're learning, they're not like, they're not like, All right. someday they're going to be. So for c, it looks like the slope is negative 1. So we can write v of t is minus 1, and d of t is minus x. But what's the y-intercept? Well, once again, no, Dad, if you speak, you have to cut it. I know what to do. So, we know d of t is minus x plus b. Now, let's verify what the y-intercept is using both points, 4, 4 and 5, 3. So. Using 4, 4, we plug in 4 for d of t. We plug in 4 for d of t, since that should be the y value. And we plug in 4 for x, since that should be the x value. So we get 4 is b minus 4, or that b is 8. And with 5, 3, we get that d of t is 5, x is 3, so minus x is minus 3, plus b, so b has to be equal to 8. 
So that's the same thing, which means our y-intercept is 8. So what about d? Well, it's static. So d of t is just the y value for that entire time, which is just 3. And v of t is completely blank because it's not changing. And what? Oh, yeah. And finally, we have d of t is, we already know the slope is minus 4 over 3. So we can write this. Oh, sorry. But what is the y-intercept? So let's verify it using both points. So the first point we use is going to be 7, 3, and the second one is 10, minus 1. So plugging in 7 and minus 3. Huh? So plugging in 7, minus 3. Oh, sorry. Plugging in 7, 3, we get d of t should be 3 is equal to minus 3. Dad, we don't have that much space. I have to do the other one here as well. So you want me to write the equation twice? So this is for 7, 3, and this is for 10, minus 1. So for 7, 3, d of t should be equal to 3, and t should be equal to 7. So 3 is equal to minus 28 over 7, so it looks like we, oh sorry, minus 28 over 3, so it looks like we have to make a common denominator by writing b is equal to 28 over 3, plus uh, what's 3 expressed in thirds, it's of course 9 over 3, which gives us 37 over 3. All right, and what about here? Well, using 10, comma minus 1, we get plugging in minus 1 for d of t. Minus 1 is equal to minus 4 over 3 times plug in 10 for t plus b. So minus 1 is equal to minus 40 over 3 times uh, plus b, which gives us minus 3 over 3 plus 40 over 3 is equal to b, which means 37 over 3. So, there it is. Our final y-intercept is 37 over 3, which means this is the final answer.